that's good diet Pepsi. Welcome to the video. This is Alchemy Jenkins and Alchemy Elevated, and we're bringing you the Position 5 tier list, sponsored by Diet Beppis. Hello, Elevated. Hello. This is uh, this is my stuff right here. I I feel a little bit like put off by the strong language that you use to describe these heroes, but at the same time, this is kind of my feeling towards them that you have put in the brackets next to each tier. So, you know, at the same time, I can get I can get on board with your language. Okay. Okay. So, with the completely bullshit heroes, aka the S tier, we have Coddle, Phoenix, Lich, and Snapfire. Do you agree or disagree with these ones? Um, I agree with all of them except for maybe Phoenix. I know that the hero is arguably the best support hero in the game at the moment, but I would argue that he is better as a four than as a five. And I think that four is so good because you can rush the Agonims, whereas five, you're a little bit more reliant on your team to like give you the space to get more items. And he's not the best laner from levels like one and two. But I, I can get on board with him being a, a top tier five just because I like the hero. It's a really good hero. And most fours that are really good can also be played as fives. Okay, here's my argument for Phoenix. You ready? Mm -hmm. Phoenix is fucking broken. <laughs> this is the best hero in Dota 2 right now. It's completely nuts. I don't know how we didn't see it before. You could kind of feel it in games, you know, where... I've been playing it. It uh, felt really good for a long time. <laughs> okay. I haven't seen it. People, it's just been under under the radar for some reason. Nobody has been paying any attention to it until people started picking it in ESL. And now all of a sudden, everybody is spamming in pubs. I suggest picking Phoenix. I suggest picking Phoenix. I said, oh, they picked Phoenix. GG. It's it's crazy how the the tides have turned in terms of the public perception of how strong this hero is. So, okay, how do we explain it? Um, I think basically all of these abilities were buffed a long time ago. Uh, the Icarus dive, the cooldown was reduced. I can't see it on my screen, which is unfortunate. It doesn't show me the little tooltips anymore. Uh, Fire Spirit's damage has been buffed. The Sunray, I believe, was Maybe the damage was buffed. Something with Sunray. Um, the Supernova. Jesus Christ. The Aghanim Scepter is like three Aghanim Scepters in one. You can save somebody. It increases the amount of hits that you get on the egg. It, it, it lets you Sunray out of the goddamn Supernova. That is unreal. It is three Aghanim Scepters in one. And that is all on top of the fact that this Supernova damage now goes through magic immunity. This hero is a crazy team fighter going into the late game. There is nothing that you can do to stop Supernova from being a, an absolutely devastating ability. And also, I think people are way better at playing around Phoenix, playing around a little bit of the weak laning, and protecting the egg. I, I think people have gotten a lot better at that. Yeah, I would say that if you want to pick up this hero, the most important thing is learning how to place your egg in team fights because that is the biggest thing that I see people messing up is that they like dive in the middle of six heroes or five heroes and then they just drop their egg. That's not what happens. You put it on like the periphery of the fight or if you have like a secondary ultimate to protect it, like a chronosphere, like a black hole, like a, a caudal ultimate, um, these kinds of things have to be paired with the egg. Otherwise you probably won't get it off. The only other thing I would say for it not being the best hero in the game is that Snapfire is also very good and extremely good against the egg. That's true. Um, Marana. So why I was putting Marana so high up there is that in SA, this hero is being picked a lot and people were picking Marana every game to counter it because Marana is very good against the egg. True. Juggernaut is very good against the egg. Um, there are tools to deal with it, but I agree that all the skills do a ton of damage. Whenever I pick this hero as a support, I almost always have the most damage on my team, which is bananas, because <laughs> that's not really how it's supposed to go. Um, I love the hero personally. It's a high skill hero to play to the, the highest extent. Um, but that being said, it's really good. Yeah, nice hero. Uh, speaking of eggs, Keeper of the Light, uh, I feel like when this hero originally got nerfed, I know this is your shit, so I'll let you talk in a second, but I feel like when this hero got nerfed, it was still good and yep. fell off for kind of bullshit reasons. Like people just kind of 
wanted to try other heroes. Maybe the meta kind of shifted away from Cuddle, but it really seems like it's back. This egg, this Will-O-Wisp, I, I feel like every time he's he's pressing this, it's not possible over. to kill it. Yeah, you can't <laughs> kill it. I've, I've, I've been in these games, these top 100 games. Everybody, they're all much better players than I am. They're like, kill the egg, kill the egg. We turn and kill it, and we feed trying to kill the fucking egg because yeah. it just it just sleeps us two seconds after. Well, two seconds is a very long amount of time in Dota. But 0. 0.2 seconds, and all of a sudden we're slept again. It, 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 Coddle really feels good. I feel like Coddle is good against a lot of the popular offlaners, heroes like Beastmaster, like Mars. You can completely disrupt their uh, team fight abilities, like the Roar and all the minions. You just blind them or use the ultimate mars ulti you drop the coddle ultimate uh, also in lane very good against these heroes it coddle just feels really good right now and i i think the win rate uh shows that it's like 700 picks or something in pro level pubs with about a 56 percent win rate which is insanely high for a first pick position five hero yeah he's the best combo breaker in the game in my opinion like He's he's like the ultimate counter initiator because i i even played against a storm yesterday as this hero and I would just sit as far away from the hero that I knew was going to get initiated on as possible so they wouldn't jump me. And then as soon as I see the storm zipping in, I would just drop the ultimate on top of that hero and storm would instantly be stunned as soon as he came out of ball Right, lightning. right. And so, then there's there's like some sort of follow-up and then he's just dead. Yep. So uh, also, have you seen his level 20 talent with the Will-O-Wisp AoE? Like that shit's not okay. It's the entire screen. <laughs> you I've, actually... I've, I've not seen that yet, actually, because the game usually ends before level twenty. Yeah, and mo a lot of people are going the mono magic, but the AOE is actually your entire screen. You can't get out of it. It's not possible. You have to kill the flickering thing, uh, but that's also difficult, as we just talked about. Uh, I I completely agree with what you said that this hero was good even after getting nerfed, and I think that's kind of what happened with Phoenix and even Snapfire to some extent, where like. You know, they got rid of the pure damage on Phoenix Sunray. The rest of the skills were still really good. Coddle, they nerfed the blinding light in terms of his mana cost. You can still show up the lane with a mango, and then by the time you've used blinding light and your mango, you have chakra magic, and then you can blinding light forever. Right. Um, another thing that's making this hero super popular is that heroes like Ember Spirit with chakra magic is broken. Oh, right, Double the combos. Slight. Yeah, the combos yeah. are insane with this hero. Double slight's broken. Uh, Bristleback is quite strong now. Broken with Coddle. Um, Pugna Blast with, with Chakra is broken. Uh, Pugna Ultimate with Chakra is broken. Although it doesn't actually do that. So never mind. But basically, any combo you can think of where you have a low cooldown spell or even a longer cooldown spell. Like I even saw um, OG abusing it with Fissure earlier where they were like, they would Fissure to initiate the fight chakra the, Dude. the earth shaker and then he would fissure again like five seconds later in the fight and it's, that's just like way too much stun it's nuts to have a good coddle on your team like I, i've been playing sand king and i'll just burrow in and then turn on sandstorm and then he chakras me and it's like oh shit i have another burrow so i'm just yeah. stunning some guy for eight seconds in sandstorm and doing 600 damage it doesn't feel okay it doesn't feel yeah. okay at all and i feel like this is one of those heroes where people are pretty bad at it generally speaking like people don't think of these combos and once it trickles down like it has happened to ember spirit you can queue against some 3k ember spirit and they will outplay you they'll do sick shit on ember because yep. the mechanics have spilled down people have played enough ember that even maybe 3k players are playing like mechanically 6k embers and eventually that will happen with coddle but this chakra magic is the, the way that it works now is so new and these combos are so new to pros that this needs to trickle down because really like four to five months ago people really started experimenting with coddle combos that weren't just bristle coddle yep um and one other thing is like the weakest part of his game is the laning stage at like level one two but blinding light is still insane like you should basically be trying to blinding light people into your tower or blinding light them into a stacked camp so they take a bunch of damage you're not your job is not really to trade with people it's to like push them into stuff that trades with them for you i do uh, feel just... i do feel like level one to two is easy for a lot of heroes right now just because of like the headdress trend yeah and just the regen like I, and, and and pulling the creeps like i don't know what it is but it, it really feels like to me the first two or three minutes of the game in high level pubs are kind of skipped almost you know mm -hmm. it's just people pulling versus each other pulling creeps sitting there with headdress having infinite regen not really laning or getting kills or trading harass or anything like that in any meaningful way until everybody has levels that's like why i think morphling is also pretty strong right now because it feels like you're skipping the first few levels where you could normally punish a morphling 
Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm on board with that. Uh, Lich, the best hero to pick when you don't know what else to pick. God. Simple as that. Like it's so easy to play. You don't even have to try. You can lane it with anything, and it's gonna feel like that hero has like 49 armor, <laughs> and then yeah. it yeah. has control. It's got one of the most insane ultimates in the game. Actually, the more I play Lich, the more I'm like, Chain Frost is really not okay. It does so much damage, and the slow is ridiculous. It's it's a fight winner. If you can get a Chain Frost off in the middle of two or three heroes, you will legitimately get a triple kill almost every single fight. It's it's um, it's nuts to consider a hero like Vengeful Spirit. And don't get me wrong. I don't hate Venge. Venge is actually okay right now, in my opinion. But comparing that to something like Lich, that is a position 5 that can have a completely barren inventory and just press Chain Frost and still do the most damage in a team fight at like 40 minutes into the game, that's not okay. While also giving somebody, like you said, 50 armor worth of physical damage reduction, slow, it also does damage on a 15 second cooldown, while also doing uh, some disable that's instant, 2.3 seconds, pulls the enemy towards you, drains their fucking mana for some godforsaken reason, <laughs> and then has some of the best laning in the game. Like, this hero straight up does way too much. Way yep. too much. And it's like Vengeful Spirit walks in. It's like, I have a stun, guys. Lich is just like, I'm a fucking god. Like, <laughs> okay, dude, great. You picked Lich. Congrats, fucking Latians. Honestly, this hero needs to be nerfed. Straight up. I'm so sick of leaning against it. Oh, they picked <laughs> yeah. Lich. Guess I need nine tangos and a salve and to cut the wave and to have my support bring me a salve and have a headdress. Fan-fucking-tastic. All right, yeah. I'm obviously super biased say, and pissed off about this, but you get what I'm saying. As an offlaner, you're probably so tired of Lich. Yeah, I can imagine. Imagine. So tired of it. And uh, speaking of tired, I'm also tired of this hero. I'm tired of whatever goddamn hero this hero has in her lane all of a sudden becomes the biggest kill threat in the world. I'm laning against some Wraith King. Oh, that hero just wants to hit creeps. He's so useless. Boom! Snapfire cookie on top of me. Boom! Wraith King stuns. Crits me for 300 damage. Oh god, thank god I'm gonna get away. Scatter blast. All of a sudden I'm slow by 100%. Wait a minute, that's a fucking stun! 100%? That puts me to zero. <laughs> I, I I don't understand. I don't understand how Lich and Staffire are still in the meta. I'm glad that Phoenix and Caudle are like trending, but I don't know how Lich and Staffire are still so god goddamn broken. It doesn't feel like any of the nerfs have done anything. It really yeah, doesn't. They, they need to up the cooldown on on all of her skills and increase the mana cost because right now everything still feels spammable. And to be completely frank, like they nerfed the ultimate, which w did way too much damage, but. This hero like actually doesn't care about her ultimate. <laughs> Almost the entire purpose of the hero is to use Cookie and Scatter Blast as much as possible. And you can kill the egg. You can kill Coddle's thing. You can kill Tombstone. Lil Shredder is a ridiculous skill that has a huge amount of utility. Really good at pushing towers. If you're being chased by a carry, you just Lil Shredder them and they actually can't attack you. It's like having a halberd built into your hero. Yep. It's it's weird that it stacks. It's just <laughs> it it can be like a enchantress's passive if you use it right on the right hero. It's very yeah. annoying. Like your little shredder, three seconds. You know you can't attack. Uh, it's 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 quite annoying. Yeah, I, like you said, this hero, all of the abilities just do a lot of things, and I think people have gotten very good. At, at using those things and playing around those things. I think the ultimate's still really good. Uh, at the yep. very least, it's it's something that, you know, dissuades people for, from committing hard into a fight because if you do get hit by all eight globs, you're done. Like, you can't fight that. There's yep. there's no way. So it's like, she she pops that, you have to stop it, or you have to not fight. Still, it yep. doesn't matter what the, if that the damage got nerfed. Okay, A tier. And you may have noticed, if you were paying attention to our last support list uh, for position five, that Bane is in here. Why is Bane no longer S tier? Because Bane can't push lanes. That's yep. why Bane is in A tier, in my opinion. I really feel like this hero is busted, particularly because this enfeeble status resistance reduction, I don't even care about the magic resistance reduction. That's cool. Throwing, throwing extra you know, marshmallows into the fire. That's a horrible saying or analogy, but you get what I'm saying. It's very, very broken. Already does enough. Um, but with that being said, once you fall behind on Bane, you are basically just a grip. You're just a nightmare. Uh, you're not going to get items. If your team isn't pushing lanes, there's nothing you can do about that. You you can just lose. So I would say in like in very high rated games, Bane is still 
100% S tier, but in uh, in basically every other bracket, you're going to want to have more control over the game. And yep. ba Bane, unfortunately, does not give you that in terms of pushing lanes, which is very important, and most people don't do that in the lower rated games, so that's super important in those. But he does yeah, give I you control of fights. I would say that Bane is arguably the worst lane pusher in the entire game. So that is definitely hey man, a big problem. He can brain sap the ranged creep. Yeah. That's so can, that's sick. Even even Lich, who is kind of similar to Bane in that regard, can at least frost shield his wave and then that pushes the wave. Yep. Bane is like one unit dies <laughs> and then I have to do it to another unit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's pretty it's pretty rough, but still a fantastic hero. Like the the hero is way better than it's ever been, you know, in, in in a long time. It's just that once again, like you're you're lacking a core fundamental aspect of of winning games uh, and having yep. control over games. Okay, Winter Wyvern. This is a hero who does not lack that. I think Winter Wyvern is definitely weaker in lane than something like a Bane, something mm -hmm. like a Snapfire. Uh, maybe not necessarily as good. As those heroes, just generally speaking, like all the spells combined, uh, but Winter Wyvern does a lot of damage with Arctic Burn, uh, percentage damage, so you don't need any items. Uh, Splinter Blast is amazing for pushing lanes and for harassing in the laning stage. The unfortunate thing is you need a couple levels in it before it's very efficient. Uh, Cold Embrace is one of the best saves in the game, basically saves from any hard carry because they all do physical damage. And then Winter's Curse. What do we even need to say about this ability? It's, it's one of the best AoE ultimates in the game. It's great setup. It does a lot of damage. You can always kill one hero if the enemy team is ahead of you well that's good because winter winner's curse uses them against each other so you can just take their items and use them against one of the enemy heroes so this hero can always win games you will have a lot of control over games for sure uh, i would say it, this is a good hero to try to master if you're looking mm -hmm. to get into to position five because it's always been good and i think it always will be yeah i would agree with that it, it just has a lot of utility um i think that the execution threshold for this hero is much higher than anybody in the S tier and probably anybody else in the A tier because you can really fuck up your team yeah, <laughs> with true. a bad cold, cold embrace or winner's curse. Um, but that being said, you can also carry fights and you can carry games with this hero. Um, if you're having trouble with Meepo in your bracket or you're just scared of getting Meepo, just pick this hero because... Meepo can't play the game. Yep, good against a lot of those heroes. Okay, so let's cover the other A tier heroes. We have Jakiro, Nature's Prophet, Ogre. Uh, we'll quickly go over these. Jakiro, this hero is amazing at pushing lanes. The uh, dual breath has been buffed recently. It now does damage on the first tick, so people can't blink away. Monkey King can't jump, things like that. That's pretty nice. Ice Path, this is one of the best AoE stuns in the game. 2.5 seconds, 9 second cooldown. That's nuts. Uh, Liquid Fire, great for pushing towers. It's free, doesn't cost any mana, so it's great for harassing in lane. If you look at the level one, uh, level one point, it's only half as much as the level four point. So it's very efficient at level one. Uh, Macro Pyre is one of the best team fight ultimates in the game and great for uh, pushing out lanes, just being like an, an annoying counter pusher. It's almost impossible to push into a Jakiro. So Jakiro, very similar to Wyvern, where you're basically kind of this team fight hero that can also shove lanes. And you're, you're way better at harassing in the laning stage because of this dual breath ability than a Winter Wyvern. So I think Jakiro's in a really nice spot and trending upward. Yep. Nature's Prophet, one of my absolute favorite heroes to play. Very specific how you play it. You need to secure outposts right before... You need to do cheeky shit like that. Secure outposts right before they go. Uh, get bounty runes on the opposite side of the map. Put deep wards down. Snipe couriers. Uh, you know, it, it, the list goes on. You have to do really cheeky, ridiculous shit to make this hero worth it because you don't really offer that much to team fights other than TPing in and feeding and maybe being some auras. So you're great yep. at laning though. The laning is really good. Treants are good for scouting, but probably one of the higher skill, not normal position fives, but this hero has always been good in Dota. So if you want to, uh, very much like we talked about in the other tier list for mid, uh, if you want to uh, play a hero like, or if you want to play a hero that basically can play in almost any role and do fine in any meta, uh, like, like Ember Spear, this hero is the kind of support, more offlane utility uh, version of that, less of a carry. So uh, Nature's is a fantastic hero. Yep. Uh, Ogre, I do, agree. You, do you agree with Ogre? <sighs> I, I hate that I put this here, but it's trending in high level pubs. And people I don't know. I mean, I guess like it's I I think the one thing if we look go back to the tier list for a sec. If we go back to the tier list, the one thing that's lacking is a bruiser. Like, yes, Bane kind of 
yes, Snapfire kind of, but we don't really have a bruiser. So like none of these heroes are you that happy with having something like a Drow Ranger, who's not that great of a hero, or a Specter. You want an ogre in your lane when you have one. Of right. Heroes. If you have a Specter, if you have a TB, there and eats damage. Yep. Right. Right. Okay. But with that being said, with that being said, if you think you can play this hero and have it be a tier and just bloodlust your people, you are dead wrong. That is not going to work. That is not how people are playing it. People are setting up kills with fire blast. People are going ignite. They are not just being a bloodlust bitch. That is not how you're how people are playing this hero at a high level right now. So um, the the people that want to pick ogre because they just want to sit in trees, do nothing, and bloodlust. That doesn't work. That's not how this hero is getting played. So he's he's way more of an active hero. Like you said, you body in, you take a lot of damage, you I'm set definitely up. Definitely not going Midas, though. No, no <laughs> Midas. Definitely not going Midas. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Th that, that's the thing is that there's some like pub issues surrounding this hero where people are doing some really dumb bullshit. But it's all yep. from pubs. It's not what the pros are doing right now. Okay, so let's we'll quickly go through the the other uh, tiers here. So we have B tier. I have. Dazzle, Oracle, Disruptor, Ancient Apparition, Vengeful Spirit, Chen, uh, and Undying. So Undying, complete dog shit outside of the laning stage, but the best laner in the game. Chen, uh, very hard I to would... play. Yeah. This is this is potentially an S-tier pro hero. Pubs. Right, exactly. Not, not sure where to put it. Exactly. That's kind of what and, I'm and thinking same, with Chen. Same with Oracle. Same with Oracle. Oracle yeah. is an S-tier pro hero. Not sure where to put it in pubs. Right. Oracle's, Oracle's solid. Oracle's like 49% win rate right now in pro level pubs, which is quite good considering it was like 40% before. So Oracle's looking very good. Very good with the Death Prophets, with the Terror Blades, which a lot of people are picking right now. Very good in the laning stage. Good at purging things. Like if there's a Boutrider in the game, you can purge the Napalm. Uh, if there's a, a Centaur in the game, you can purge his Retaliate. There's a lot that Oracle can do. You just need to know all the goddamn interactions, which is the problem right. dazzle great against melee heroes that can't purge the queue uh, the cooldown reduction is fantastic on uh, any hero because people are going necro book people are going greaves these are all good items and if you can reduce the cooldown on that this is i mean this is why sniper is viable people are going for items like pipe and necronomicon and agonim scepter on sniper and just abusing the cooldown reduction essentially and it's the same thing with dazzle uh but as a position five, it's a little hard to go for those items but i still think the dazzle is just in a good spot in general so as a position five it's decent you can push waves as Dazzle, which allows you to get some farm too. And I, true, I kind true. of feel like five is getting more and more towards being like the Greaves carrier in a lot of games, unless you have like an Underlord. Um, I'm seeing a lot of fives, like snap fires and stuff, getting, yeah. getting Greaves. Yeah, so which is, which is fantastic. Well. Fantastic on Dazzle. And yep. uh, g games are so like high, uh, like, there's so much fighting you know, happening at, at, at all points. Like, very little going back to Fountain. So something like Greaves, uh, Urn, these items are, are still very strong. Uh, Disruptor has fallen off. Unfortunately, this hero was very broken, got nerfed quite a bit. Uh, the early harass is not as much. There's there's a few things that got changed. The Static Storm, Aghanim Scepter is not as broken. That was a big thing people were going for. Still a solid hero. Disruptor has always been really good as a 5. Ancient Apparition, great against Dazzles, great against Huskars, Meepos, any healing heroes, which there's a lot of. If there wasn't a lot of healing heroes in the meta, this hero would be dog shit because it doesn't have any stuns. But there are a lot of them. Great in the laning stage. His harass is good, and then he's good against these healers. So that's why AA is solid. Vengeful Spirit. Her win rate's pretty high right now. That's kind of the only reason I put her in B tier. I feel like Venges are super useless and always really low level, but I feel like it's similar to Ogre, where people expect to be able to play Venge and do nothing and win the game, but that's not. Like, good Venges are waiting in a position to swap people out of important stuff. Like, a Chrono happens, or... Whereas I feel like in my in my pubs, the Venge is just, like, swapping me into shit. You know, I was fine, and I'm getting swapped in. It's like... All right, it, it, like you said with Wyvern, it's an easy hero to fuck up on and to ruin your team's game. But right. if you're good at it, it's a very solid hero right now. Yeah, I think you definitely need to go like just tanky Venge. I think you kind of play it like an ogre where you want to absorb punishment and then throw your body in for people. Double Bracer into Vlad's is like kind of all you need, that kind of stuff. And you're going to have a pretty high impact. Yep, yep. Uh, C tier, I put Batrider, Maiden, Treant, Shadow Shaman, Warlock, Shadow Demon. So a couple of these are trending up, a couple of these are trending down. I would say Batrider with the nerfs needs a lot more levels, uh, and as a result is worse of a position 5. You can't just be like a level 4 Batrider and have a massive impact now. This hero really needs to have the Q maxed out and the E maxed out. 
uh, before mm. it really feels like the old Batrider. Crystal Maiden, definitely the spells are in a solid spot. Like, none of these spells individually are bad. The fact that she has basically no mana is pretty bad, and the fact that she just feeds relentlessly is pretty bad. Uh, Train Protector, he hasn't really felt the same since all of the nerfs to him, where, like, yeah. Nature's Grasp was nerfed, Leech Seed was nerfed. Like, all of these things were nerfed. It, it just doesn't quite feel the same, and you need a lot of levels before it starts feeling really good. Um, definitely with certain lineups, if you can play like a turtle lineup, it's probably pretty good. But mm -hmm. still, Trant doesn't. It's, Trant just feels the same as it was in the previous patches, which was not that good. I don't. I haven't had, felt any more impact from Tree in the in the uh, most recent patches. Yeah, he just he's not really kind of what you're looking for out of a five right now, and uh, he doesn't really fit the four archetype either. So he's kind of in a weird spot. Like he he has to be a five, but he doesn't really do a lot that other fives do. Yep. Shadow Shaman, probably better played as a, as a 4. He can definitely feed as a 5. His harass is pretty good. Uh, his pushing is pretty good, but it's on a long cooldown. And you would kind of like him to get some items. Like, this hero mm -hmm. scales really nicely if you get, like, Blink Dagger, Aether Lens, uh, Agnum Scepter. So it does feel like more of a 4 rather than a position 5. Uh, Warlock, I was definitely considering Warlock as maybe being pretty solid, but then I looked at the win rate and saw that it was, like, 40%. I and, think it's awful. And, I think this hero is terrible, personally. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would definitely be. I would definitely put it in. I would. I'm fine putting it in D tier, honestly. The only reason I put it in C tier is because I was playing with like, I don't know who it was. It was some like universe or something, and somebody was playing warlock, and they were like, "That hero's broken," and it's like, okay, well. Just because like a pro player says something doesn't necessarily mean it's true because the win rate is abysmal. Uh, but yeah. that's why I put. I was like, okay, maybe there's something there. But so I'm totally okay with putting it in D tier. It feels really it's slow. The ultimate, so slow, it's man. on a three minute cooldown. Uh, the best thing about this hero is probably fatal bonds. Like that's yeah. that's probably the best thing about this hero. Shadow Demon, great at winning lanes, uh, good with these illusion heroes that people are picking. So that's why I would say instead of being in D tier, he's in C tier, maybe even B tier. Uh, great with save. Marana, great with Lashrak. Yeah, has a save. The, these heroes that really like Shadow Demon to be on the team uh, are getting picked. So Shadow Demon is definitely a, a, a fine pick right now. But if you do pick Shadow Demon, make sure your position four is some Earth Spirit or something. Some hero that can run in, get shit done, because this hero is not going to be the hero to get stuff done. He's like, yeah. okay, the fight has started. Now I'm going to contribute. Yeah, purely reactionary hero for sure. Yeah. Enchantress, this hero just feels abysmal right now. I think this is Ever like... Ever since the impetus change, right, where it costs a lot more mana, you like basically can't use it. Yeah, yeah. It's not worth the damage that it does. Everybody's getting headdress anyway, so... Right. Minimal harass. Maybe not minimal, but harass isn't as important these days. Um, the creeps, people are getting a lot better at blocking the camps. She needs levels to use those creeps anyway. She feels pretty awful, which is sad. This is, this is one of my favorite heroes. Grimstroke, I feel like this hero up. is... A, 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 way up, in my opinion. I think it's like here? a B... I, I think it's like a B, potentially A tier hero. Um, it's like the third most picked hero in ESL right now, I think. Um, I like, would say that Grimstroke is a pro pick. Like, pro players <laughs> own with this hero. It's so good, dude. Being able to ink swell Weaver or Ember Spirit or Void Spirit and have them go in. It's okay, so it's it's a battle cup hero. Let's put it this way. It is a is a top tier battle cup pick because it requires you to combo it with your teammates. And that is very hard to do in a lot of pubs. This hero destroys a lot of these very uh mobile, hard to catch heroes because you can just soul bind them and silence them. It pairs very well with them because of ink swell. You can push lanes forever with your Stroke of Fate. I legitimately think that this hero is kind of like the Coddles and the Phoenixes where it was nerfed several times, but people were just like, oh, it's bad now because it's been nerfed four times in a row. But the skills and the way they all come together is still some of the best kit you can get out of a five in the entire game. Okay, I'll, I'll move it up. I'm going to say I'm not convinced because I haven't... I haven't experienced it in my pubs, but I can't argue if the I I also have seen the pros picking it a lot in the replays that I've been watching. I can't argue with that. And it has looked it has looked pretty good. It's just that my particular experience with Grimstrokes in my pubs is that they're dog shit useless. But <laughs> I feel the same thing about Ogre, and I've seen fantastic mm. Ogre players in pro level pubs and also in pro games. So I'm um, yeah, okay. I'm 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 cool with the Grimstroke. I think a lot of heroes are getting picked in the meta too that fate like beastmaster can do the double roar you know yep. you have heroes that like weaver ember that can jump in void spirit that run in and, and use the uh the grimstroke bubble like definitely there the meta is pretty solid for him right now can also be a four as well so it's a pretty yeah. good flex picker yeah on. good at pushing lanes uh, as well and okay. the only other thing that i disagree with in your d tier is puck 
I think Puck could maybe be a tier higher. Um, I saw Solo play it today, and being able to get an Agonims on your five is ridiculous. <laughs> it's like so okay, high I'm just, out of a uh, five. It is a good headdress carrier, definitely. Like I'm just, I'm just concerned when you need more of a tanky kind of frontlining five. Like sure. I feel like Puck can really get ran over, but that's why it's in C tier. Like it doesn't, it definitely doesn't have to go in D tier. I'm just kind of like as a Puck player and it getting nerfed so much. I'm just like this hero's bad. This hero's so bad. <laughs> CC and C told me to remove it from my pick list. It's got to be bad. <laughs> so okay, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with C tier for that for sure. Um, Silencer. I think this hero is is. I like the changes, but once again, he just falls victim to this issue of needing farm in order to do stuff and needing levels. But if you get those levels, you just feed it away. You're just so easy to kill, and you have nothing that you can do about that. You press silence, the enemy team's just like, okay, BKB, Yules, Lotus, Manta, whatever billion items can take off the silence. And yep. then they just run at you and kill you and get a billion net worth. Uh, we already yeah. talked about Warlock, Witch Doctor. I think Witch Doctor is very similar to CM, possibly C tier, uh, just in the sense that feeds all the time. This is one of the <laughs> biggest feeding heroes in Dota. So easy. <laughs> like, you go on him, he's just like, oh, help. He just dies, like, every single time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the cask is good. Uh, Maledict's probably the best ability on this hero. The heal's been nerfed as dog shit. Cask has always been decent. Maledict is really strong. Ultimate, I honestly think needs buffs. It actually doesn't do as much damage as you would think when you pick up an Aghanim Scepter. Like, I've, I tested it in a lobby. It is... Armor is just too good. Or yeah. it, it feels like armor it just deal, deals with Everybody has grief now. There's always a mech in games. Yeah, there's, there's so much armor. There's so much armor. And armor is better than it was before. And this physical ability didn't get buffed. You know, when, when, they, made, when they made their armor changes. He's also absolutely terrible against the mobility heroes and absolutely terrible against all of the illusion heroes. So oh, it's yeah, like yeah, the yeah. entire meta is way better than Witch Doctor yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, finally, let's get to the dog shit tier. Pretty boring because it's the same as it was, for me <laughs> at least, it's the same as it was uh, yeah. when we did the last list. Lion, yeah. feeding griefing hero, probably a four. Um, I could possibly put it in D tier because I think it's actually not that bad, but... Jesus Christ. You hate it. You I, hate I hate it. having a guy that just runs in, hits an 80 damage stun. And he's like, all right, that's my contribution for the next 15 seconds. Like, yeah. dude, I'd rather have a pudge sitting in my trees missing hooks. I would too. Than... That's, the, that's the only thing that I was going to say is I legitimately think that five pudge might be the only viable for this hero because you can hook the tower. And, and it's, it's, it's still it, dog shit. And it gives you the ability to heavily impact late game as a five without any farm. But <laughs> that's not saying a whole lot. Very sad. Here. It's so sad. Oh, I feel like I complain about this in every tier list video, but please, Valve, this is your most iconic hero. This is the reason a lot of people... Oh, Dota 2? Oh, that's the game with the hooking guy in it. No, there's no hooking guy in this fucking game <laughs> unless you're referring to Clockwork or Timbersaw. No other hooking hero exists because this ability doesn't do that. <laughs> this is an ability for people who have giant egos to miss in the laning stage and soak my fucking experience. All right, moving on. Uh, Wind Ranger, this is a core. Techies, worst hero in Dota. What can I say? I, I don't know. Maybe a carry. Maybe Techies is a carry. <laughs> this hero is a free win for the other team. It is That's so. It is. it is so garbage right now. Dude, <sighs> in a fighting meta, having to play 4v5 the entire game and the other team's too stupid to bring detection is not a mechanic that I want. Maybe, ever they'll, in my maybe they'll run out of sentries. I don't know, dude. There's like 15 of them. Come on. Oh no! They bought the 900 gold item. Oh, my whole game is over. The mines that I spent 30 minutes planting are all gone. Oh, at least I'm level 11 when everybody's level 20 because I've been dodging fights for 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly how I feel about this hero too. Yeah, it's garbage. It's garbage. Anyway, that's it for this video. Let us know if you agree or disagree. Of course, we've been wrong about this shit before, and we're probably wrong about a lot of stuff. It's, you know, it's hard to say. We need to see what the pros are doing. We need to see what, what gets buffed, what comes into the meta, etc., etc. So if you agree or disagree, make sure to leave a comment below. Make sure to thumbs up the video for the YouTube algorithm. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.